Welcome back to Two Crows Homestead. This is Shelly. We've got a lot of projects going on this weekend, so I'm probably going to be making a few different videos this weekend, so you may like to see me in the same clothes and different times, whatever, but um, there's a lot of exciting things going on. It's February. We've got to get some seeds started. We've got some cold weather stuff we're working on, so um, yeah, just come on along. So the first project of the weekend is going to be um, beef broth. So I have some beef pieces here. These are bones from um, the person. We actually buy our beef locally. And um, so these are just, I told her that I needed some bones to make some broth and this is what I got. So um, I'm preheating the oven to 425. We're gonna roast these with the onions for about um, 30 minutes or so, 30, 35 minutes, and and then we'll get them cooking. So um, this has actually had a chance to cool down because um, I've been working from home today because we got ice here. Um, so I wasn't able to get it in the cooker as soon as I, um, as soon as it got done. So, um, some things that I'm going to add, I'm going to add some peppercorn. It's really just like about a handful. And I'm going to add about the same of salt. gonna add I don't know about four or six bay leaves and I'm going to add celery I'll rinse off the recipe that I'm using is hold on a second I'll get it So the recipe that I'm using is in the um, Ball Home Preserving book. This book is amazing. It has like everything in it. And it's the beef stock recipe. Do you want to zoom in on that? This recipe actually calls for um, carrots and beef bouillon cubes or granules. I don't have any beef bouillon cubes because I don't really use beef bouillon cubes. But um, I'm not adding that. And I'm not adding the carrots either. I do have carrots, but I just, I, I don't want to add the carrots. <laughs> so, all right. So, so it's actually starting to sizzle. So I'm gonna add water. And this is going to um, cook for, it's actually gonna cook till like Sunday morning. Um, it should cook for like 36 to 48 hours. I'm not going, I'm going to turn it up and get it to simmering. Um, but you know, you don't want it, you just want it, it to cook low and slow. So I'm going to get it up to a simmer and then I'm going to turn it down and let it cook. And then I'll probably um, be ready to can this or this will probably be ready to can Sunday morning when I get up. And... We'll continue this video then. So um, we went ahead and added carrots to it. You can see them in there a few places. Um, this is gonna be set at 400 for right now just to get it up to a simmer. And then I'll turn it down and just let it slow cook for the next 36 to 48 hours. And We'll see how it goes. All right, it's been, let me think, 48, it hasn't quite been 48. It's been about 36 hours. I put this on, well, no, we're going on 48. It's closer to two days. Um, I put this on to cook midday on Friday, uh, brought it to a simmer, little bit of a boil. It should have been a simmer. 
but I turned it down pretty quickly and it has been roughly cooking between 200 and 225 on the dial since Friday and it smells amazing. I'll show you what it looks like. So I'll show you what it looks like. That's what the broth looks like. There's bones in the bottom of it. Carrots. Onions. There's some of the bones. All the meat's been cooked off. Now we're gonna strain this and put it in pint-sized mason jars and can it. So just a tip that I do when I'm canning, I wash all my jars. Um, make sure you wash all your jars your lids and rings but mainly your jars and your lids and um and then i will put them on a cookie sheet and set them in my oven at i just turn it down to the lowest setting that my oven will go on which is 170 and keep them in there until i'm ready to use them because you want you're putting hot liquid into hot jars into a you know going to get hot canner you don't want anything super cold so that's just a tip that i do if you have a um, a dish, dishwasher, which I do not, if you have a dishwasher, you could um, leave them in your dishwasher to, I'm sure there's a setting on there to keep them warm or keep them hot, um, along with your lids. But um, I don't have a dishwasher, so I stick mine in the oven to keep them hot. All right, some things that you're going to need along with your clean jars and lids and your stock. Um, you're going to need a pressure canner. I have a Presto pressure canner. Um, so that's what my jars are going to go in. Then you're going to need some, this is a, um, a way to measure the headspace in your jars. You can also use this to take out air bubbles, but that won't be an issue to, with what we're doing today. Um, you're going to need some cheesecloth. This is kind of finely woven cheesecloth. Uh, this is what it looks like. I can put a link on Amazon to this. Um, the, like I said um, in the beginning of this video, the recipe that I'm using is from the ball canning book. Not sure what I did with that. It's from the ball canning book. But um, if you all wanna learn how to do canning, um, one a really good channel to watch is The Needy Homesteader. So a lot of these tips and tricks I got from watching her videos like this cheesecloth, this finely woven cheesecloth. And then um, this fat separator right here, this is a four cup fat separator and I can leave a link down below where to find this. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna put your broth down here and the fat's gonna rise to the top. You hit this button and your broth comes out the bottom while your fat's still sitting on the top. I can't wait to use this today because um, we needed a new fat separator because the one that we had broke and um, but it's one of those ones that has like it's got like a cup like this and then there's like a spigot that comes out the bottom where you drain out you know you pour that the stuff comes out the bottom without the fat on top but those things are messy and don't always work right so I'm really excited to use this thing um, you're also going to need uh, this funnel for your jars and a jar lifter and a lid lifter. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got my pressure canner filled to the bottom line right there with water. And I put a plop of uh, vinegar in there that's gonna keep my jars from getting that funky film on them. And I've turned my heat on to get my water heated up. Okay, so I started doing this with this and let me just show you you can see right here, 
can you can you see the level so you see the fat sitting on top and the broth is down here okay um however it's kind of messy because i wasn't thinking and so i'm just going to set this over here i'm going to go through and get all of my food stuff out of this and i've got that draining into a bowl underneath that i'll pour back in here but um this is all beef and fat and all that goodness and i'm sure that our pigs will absolutely love this so let me strain all of this out and i'll be right back okay so i have fished out there's still some stuff in there but i have fished out like all of the big pieces the celery the carrots the big bones they're in the sink straining into a bowl underneath them so i can get the broth that's in them but all right so all right i'm gonna let that sit for a minute fat very quickly rises to the top see right there is the line of fat this is all broth all right next i have um my cheese cloth it's double lined so two pieces together and um it's sitting in my funnel there's my jar i'm gonna hit this button it's going to lift up that little red thing inside there and let it strain. So I'm going to fill this up to one inch headspace. A little bit more. That's typically this bottom um, thing right there, that thread. All right. And we're going to go on to the next one. Y'all, I am loving this strainer. It is awesome. However, I'm not going to get it, let it get down very far. I'm going to stop it right there. And I'm going to fill up some more. Wow, this thing is like a serious game changer. I really like this compared to the other one we had that had that nozzle that stuck out the side. That thing was just a pain. And maybe I was never using it right. Maybe I just never got it, but oh, I hated it. And to be honest, um, I only used it a couple times. It was really something more that Randy used when he was like making sauces and stuff for, you know, meat that we smoked or that he grilled. Um, when it broke, I gleefully threw it in the trash. Ain't gonna lie. That thing was pointless to me. I have no idea why. I don't know. But this is awesome. Love this. Again, you can see the level of fat at the top. I'm going to hit this. All right, let me get the rest of these jars filled up and I'll bring you back. So just a little tip if you're using this and if I'm telling you it's a tip, it's because I screwed up. Make sure, you see how thick the fat is? It's because I've been you know, adding more and adding more to fill up these jars. Um, make sure that you don't fill up a jar past that fat line or you'll get fat into your stuff. So yeah, don't do that. In other words, if it gets down that low, add more broth. So I have um, 10 pint jars filled with beef stock and that's what my pressure canner will hold. Um, this cup is full of, not full, but it has some vinegar in it. And so basically what you're gonna do. Okay, so with this canner, 
you can see there is this V and this V, those line up. When you get those lined up, then you can close the canner. So with this recipe, again, out of the ball book, I'll link that down below. This recipe says that you um, place the jars in the pressure canner, adjust the water level, lock the lid, bring it to a boil over medium heat, vent steam for 10 minutes. So we're gonna let the steam come out of this for, for 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. And then um, once that has a continuous steam coming out of it for 10 minutes, and I'm not talking about sputtering, I'm talking about a continuous, you know, steam, um, then we will put the, where am I at? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. Then we will put the vent covers. Um, it says to pressure cook for um, 10 pounds of pressure. So with a... So with this particular pressure canner, it comes with these pieces right here. This is the vent cover. This is the vent cover. So this is five pounds of pressure. If you add one ring, that's 10 pounds of pressure. And you add the third ring, that's 15 pounds of pressure. All right, once we get a continuous stream of steam coming out of the vent, it has to be coming out, you know, full steam for 10 minutes. We will put the vent cover over that, um, 10 pounds of pressure, and we will process these, since we have pint jars in there, we'll process this for 20 minutes. Okay, you probably can't see it in the video, maybe you can, but there's steam coming out of the vent. So I have set my timer for 10 minutes, and um, then we'll put the I don't know if you can see it if I... Yeah, I don't think that I can make you see it. <laughs> anyway, I have set my timer for 10 minutes and when the timer goes off, we will put the vent cover on for 10 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes. So we have put our weight on and set our timer for 20 minutes. All right, the timer has gone off. You can still see the weight on the um, vent. It's rocking, and this thing is stuck up as well. And um, so we're just gonna wait for that to completely stop. It takes a while for that to cool down. I'm not gonna touch it, do anything with it. All I did was turn the stove top off, and um, now I'm gonna let it cool. So it has been approximately two hours. Um, this little thing has gone back down. And now I'm going to open up my canner. I'm going to open it up away from me because I don't want steam in my face. I'm going to take out the broth. Is that familiar pop? Jars ceiling. I'm very pleased with how these turned out. I'm going to let them sit here on the counter and cool overnight. Um, I ended up getting see, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pints. In the morning, they're still the jars are still a little bit warm, 
So I'm gonna let them cool overnight and um, in the morning I will write on top of the jars what they are and put them in the pantry. So yeah. So I'm really tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed week. See you later.